All right, so in this video lesson here, let's look at how we can apply our ability in taking derivatives into uh, finding further limits, okay? So normally, even though it, uh, either it's, it is a a face-to-face -face course or a, a an online course, this topic I'm about to teach is, is usually the the at the end, near or near the end of a quarter. So by the time that you arrive at this, uh, uh, the video lesson here then normally uh, you're gonna be uh, quite done with limits and so you thought you're gonna be completely done with limits but now here we are the topics of limits uh, resurface here a little bit more but now we're gonna apply the, 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 uh, our skills our ability in uh, taking derivatives into the finding uh, some more advanced uh, kind of uh, limits problems okay so so now I'm gonna introduce uh, for our discussion title here we're going to learn L'Hopital's rule. Okay. So L'Hopital is uh, a, a, the name of a French mathematician, and he came up with this rule, and we, we will be uh, getting that. So the L'Hopital's rule, okay, and uh, the indeterminate form. Indeterminate. Right, so we're gonna, along with learning of uh, what the L'Hopital's rules are, we're also gonna learn what it means by being the any one of the indeterminate forms. Okay, okay. so that's uh, what we're heading into. And so now, before we can actually get into the learning what what the L'Hopital's the L'Hopital's rules uh, are and, and how they can be useful for us. We actually need to, to understand a little bit about the indeterminate, indeterminate forms right here. So, so now a lot of times when you are taking limits and when your function is in the form of a, the function of, that we are taking limit is in the form of a, a, a function f of x over a g of x and we are trying to find the limits as x is getting close to a limit point. And notice, even though I'm using x going to a limit point here, but it could also be, it works the same with, as if it was a limit at infinity here as well. Okay, so basically your function here, the setup for the function here is being a, a quotient. And so now, of course, basic limit law says uh, we can go ahead and bring that into two separate limits. There's a limit of x as x approaching a for f of x and a limit of s x approaching a same limits point here for g of x and now unfortunately and we actually have seen this kind of problems a lot of time back in our work before but so now at the end if we follow through um, the limit laws the basic limit laws here then if we run into a final based on the, 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 the basic limit laws and we run into a final uh, conclusion such as a zero over zero that's w or it's this, I should have set the form here, so if we run into a final form that has a zero over zero, or, or our function, he, our work here, our two limits here runs into a, an infinity over infinity, okay? So these two are being regarded as, uh, these two forms here are being regarded as the indeterminate forms. So one of them is the zero over zero is an indeterminate form, and this one here, infinity over infinity, this is another indeterminate form. So so far now I'm introducing two indeterminate forms. So indeterminate. Okay. So these are the two indeterminate indeterminate forms. Now, so why do we call them indeterminate? So why do we call any one of this being indeterminate? We call them indeterminate simply because anytime we are arrive into either one of these two forms, that does not mean uh, we're gonna just simply say DNE for that. No, just because we have a divided by zero here doesn't mean we're gonna have a DNE. So it just means we have an inconclusive answer and we have to find a different way to find uh, the answer to that. 
So it just, so zero over zero. That and that's why it's called indeterminate. It just means uh, we are we can't give it. It's 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 not something that we can determine right at this step right here. So find a different solution. Find a different solution. And so I'm pretty sure that we have seen some of these uh, back in the days that when we were still formally learning about limits and and built those uh, foundation. And so in uh, the for the other indeterminate form that I have on the board right here. You see, I over my times teaching, I keep having students mistakenly going this way. Infinity, cancel with infinity, equals 1. And Rushley decide that the answer to this is 1. But unfortunately, that is not the correct way of arguing the work. And so this is another indeterminate form here in a sense that both numerator and denominator are growing large. And so since both of them are growing large, and by the way, infinity itself is not a number, so we cannot cancel. We cannot cancel out infinity with infinity. And it's even worse that we cancel zero with zero in, in that form together once. So this is even way off the hook for here. So we can't do that. And so now when we run into, and so I was already clear that zero over zero is an indeterminate, and it's, and, and if you're looking at a zero in the denominator and, and about to say DNA, &E, it's a little rush. We have to find and really prove it's DNA. &E. So just right here is, a D, is a, an indeterminate form. And so now that form right here as well is an indeterminate form because we simply cannot just cancel the, the infinity out and, and get a 1. And so, and sometimes infinity over infinity can grow and can keep, can continue to grow and become a, 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 an infinity. Sometimes a form like this can continue to grow but uh, but grow to a finite value, and sometimes a form like this can continue to uh, can can uh, head down to a zero value. So there are so many scenarios, there are so many possibilities can happen with this, and that's why this one here can be another indeterminate. So let me actually remind you a problem like this that you won't so that I, I can uh, recall some of your uh, understanding. But think about a problem like this: an x squared plus four over an, a 5x squared minus 4x plus 1, for example. And we take the limit as x goes to positive infinity. So this problem here, if we follow the, the basic limit laws on this, then we run into an infinity in the numerator. Because numerator is a polynomial, even degree, uh, positive co leading coefficient. So it's the right end, the right end behavior. It's going to grow. So that, that polynomial x squared plus 4 is going to grow to positive infinity. And the same way with this, we have even degree and uh, with a positive leading coefficient. So just the, the bottom part here will also grow to infinity. So we have, I just want to point out that we have already seen this back in the days that we were learning particularly about uh, how to find limits. But hey, back in those days, when even if we went and we, we ran into these, into this form right here, we couldn't stop there and, 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 and call that it equals 1. But our actual answer, we had to apply some, some algebraic manip manipulation. And we ran into the answer as being 1 half. So that's what I was saying right, right here, being in, being in a final form, that running into a form where it shows inf infinity over infinity is simply not enough to make, an an to make a, a final conclusion. And that's why it's called, it's another one being classified as an indeterminate form. Okay? And so it can be a lot of things happening here. And so now, I'm not saying that there are only two indeterminate forms ever, but uh, these are the two uh, most commonly happen one out there. Okay? These two indeterminate forms either a zero over zero or an infinity over infinity. These are the two. Uh, most commonly seen one out there. Okay, and so now let me erase uh, the introduction with the. And so for these uh, two indeterminate forms that I primarily introduced here, then this is where the L'Hopital's rule come in and become uh, useful. And it's actually. I shouldn't use plural on the L'Hopital's rule. It, there's only one rule, and it works for, for all of these. So okay, now I'm going to introduce the L'Hopital. All right, so the L'Hopital's rule. And really, it's just one general rule that handles any of the indeterminate form like that.
All right, so now I'm going to say, suppose f of x, g of x, or differentiable. Okay, so recall for yourself the term differentiable. It means uh, these are all functions that we can find derivative, general derivative, anywhere. Suppose uh, f and g of x are differentiable. Differentiable functions. Okay, and uh, Let me quickly and let's say g prime of x or I mean is simply other than zero for near For x near a, okay. But possibly, but except, possibly at x equals a, okay. So these are some requirements before we can actually start getting into the the the, uh, the L'Hopital rule. And so now the role of rule says uh, if the limit of f of x as x goes to 0, I mean x go to a being the same with the limit as x goes to a for the function g of x, okay, and being both zero. So this is the this is where it's okay. or the same limits here as x go to a of the function f of x and the function g of x. They're both going to infinity. So they're both going either they're both going to zero or they're both going to infinity. And to be precise, plus and minus infinity. Okay? And so now let me use uh, the other board for the next uh, part of our theorem. And so now in that way, then finding this limits f of x over g of x. As we're taking limits for x goes to a right here. Okay, and this is the real proven result of the of the L'Hopital's rule over here. It L'Hopital's rule says then in that case, uh, we can just simply find uh, the, der the derivative, the derivative of f of x as a separate derivative, and find the derivative of g of x as another separate derivative, and put them back into as a fraction in, in, in the same order of how the two functions started, and take the limits as x goes to a again, and this is this will be the same or equal result. So before I get any further, let me explain how this beginning piece of our uh, statement here, you see, the first piece, it says either, I mean, limit of f of x as x getting close to a equal to limit of g of x as x getting to a equals 0. That means uh, when we are taking this limit and we ran into a form, see, this limit right here, part of the work, it means uh, we do a limit of f of x over a limit of g of x. And that gives us, see, that limit here goes to a zero. 
and the, uh, the limit in the denominator also go to the zero. That's one of the two indeterminate forms I, that I have introduced previously before we got into this uh, L'Hopital's rule. And that's what this means. And that's what this uh, first line right here means. It means uh, when both numerator limits and the denominator limits equal zero, so that so that when we set them up in a in a fraction setting like this, then both numerator and denominator both went into zero over zero, and that's how it, it ended up into one of the two indeterminate forms that I've had. Okay, so that's one case. Or the other case was. So it's all about primarily we want to consider the limit of a of a fraction or a a you know a a, a setting that has fraction a numerator and a denominator. So on the other hand, if either if both of them numerator and denominator both go to some kind of infinity, see f of x can go to either positive or negative infinity, and then at the same time and at the same time as well. G of x also, the denominator function also has a limit going to positive or negative infinity. Then that means when we are taking the overall limit, when we're taking the, uh, the, the limit of the, the entire quotient like this, then it is uh, giving us another indeterminate form. So basically, you can think about something like that. Okay, And so this is, once again, a, the, the other one of among the two indeterminate forms that I have introduced like that. Okay, And so now, now L'Hopital's rule says, if we run into the kind of problem where we find limits of a quotient, the limits of a quotient, and basically following through the basic limit laws, let us to let us write into either the zero over zero, or any one of the infinity over infinity case right here. Then we consider that these any one of these as an indeterminate form and that's where now the rule says the L'Hopital's rule says we can go ahead and just the limits we're about to find here is surprisingly or shockingly equal to the limits of the problem where you just simply differentiate find the derivative of f of x and at the same time find the derivative of g of x and then stack them up stack them up as a fraction in the same order as how it started out in the beginning and take the limits again Okay, and that will give us the, 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 the answer. Okay, so I have to apologize a little bit. I shouldn't rush saying doing this will give us the answer, but it's actually a, a proven rule that so these two limits are actually equal. So observe how they are. One thing I have to be clear. This is not the quotient rule. The quotient rule is when you take the derivative, because at this point, when we arrive at this formula right here, then, then we have learned a lot in, in your uh, learning. The quotient rule for taking derivative says we take the derivative of f, multiply with g without prime, minus f without prime, multiply with g prime, and divided by g squared. This is the, uh, the, the quotient rule. But here, we are not taking, we're not applying the quotient rule. We are taking two separate derivatives for f of x and for g of x independently from each other independent from each other and we put them back as a fraction quotient form like just like how they started out in the beginning and the two limits here are guaranteed to to be the same result okay to come out equal value and that's what the L'Hopital's rule says here okay and that's what it is okay and so Yes, it's it's a lot of wordings to understand, but uh, when it, we get we actually get into the how how to that's done and how how this can be done and applied here, it's going to be a lot easier to understand here. Otherwise, if I spend you know, days and hours of just keep explaining the wording of the the L'Hopital's rule, no one will ever understand that. Okay, so now let's get into the example one right here. And so even though there was, I mean, really tearing it down to, to clear wording, then it has to be a, a little bit of a lengthy statement for the, for the, the L'Hopital's rule. But um, when we're actually doing that, the, the, the only one thing to keep in mind is the L'Hopital's rule is only to handle 
when your quotient, the, when you check limits of a quotient and it, go, it ends up into either a 0 over 0 or any one of the infinity over another infinity. Okay? Infinity will never be the same infinity. So some infinity over another infinity. Each one of the numerator and in, each one in the numerator and the denominator here can be either plus and minus. Okay? And so these are the fundamental, I mean these are the indeterminate forms that the L'Hopital's rule can handle directly. So it's actually only one rule that answers, uh, that, that can give an answer as to a lot of these uh, cases already. A lot of these indeterminate forms. Oh, okay, and so let me now take everyone into example one. All right, so example one, it, we're just now back to a standard uh, finding limits problem. Okay, and so let's evaluate the limits of the following function. How about part A? Because I would like to give uh, as many uh, problems as possible within this video lecture here. So how about we want to find the limit as x approaching positive infinity okay, for the function natural log of x, natural log of x squared over x. Okay. So that's our function that starts right here for the things to work out. And so like I said again, back in the L'Hopital's rule itself, I used, uh, and this is only the, a part that remains uh, before I completely erased everything away. But So in the L'Hopital's rule itself, then normally me or any, uh, it, it is I or any other textbook writers or any other professors would use the, a, a seems like a, finite limit point value, but this limit, this L'Hopital's rule also works when we run into the problem where we are finding limits for x approaching a, an, an infinity like this case right here. So L'Hopital's rule also applicable to the limits at infinity as well. And I believe I, I briefly said that as well, or just uh, earlier. And so now, here's how I see it. So. Let me quickly use the basic limit law right here. Basic limit laws allows us to break that down into two separate limits. One of them is natural log of x squared, and the other one is x. And as x is getting to positive infinity, x is getting close to positive infinity. Okay? And so now we can easily see that the numerator will grow to positive infinity because a natural log function itself is a function like this. We don't have to be exactly precise, but the shape is like that. And as we keep getting further to the right hand, hand side, the functions keep rising, you know, uh, without any uh, boundary. Okay, and so now we even squared our natural log of x function and making it even more positive and and uh, and even more the positive. And so now numerator will definitely go to a, an infinity, a positive infinity in the numerator. And the limits in the denominator. So now we have seen that enough up to this point in our learning. That f of x equals x, the denominator here, it's just a nice uh, 45 degrees line right here. And so as we are getting further to the right hand side, right, right hand behavior is indicating that this function x, the simple function f of x equals x, it's going to also grow to positive infinity. So that means uh, putting it, the two pieces together, then our function here is, if we're taking limits using straight uh, limit laws right here, direct limit laws is going to run immediately into an, an indeterminate form, as I have already pointed out. But then that now brings up a good sign. It now rings a good sign that now we can start applying the, the L'Hopital's rule that I have uh, introduced previously. Okay, so this is the, the, the key step for the L'Hopital's rule over here. So if this limit turns into a, an indeterminate form, then this is what I can do. And so, and this is where we, I'm saying that we, we apply and we have to learn the L'Hopital's rule after we have already learned about how to take the derivatives. And so, now I don't need this work anymore. I don't need the work for 
basic limit because it's not leading us anywhere. So we have to sort of like stop that going that route, stop going in anywhere further into that route. We're going to turn to a different route, a different direction to, to get the problem done. So now that limit here will be equal to, and I learned this from my uh, past professor, a favorite professor of mine that I learned this style from, from but any time I'm that that I'm about to use the L'Hopital's rule, I learned this style from my professor that I, I'm going to put a a little indication that my limits here will equal or be the same result as the limits, but this is guaranteed by L'Hopital's rule. So I put the little the superscript L'Hopital on, on top of that my equal sign to indicate that. So to find this actual limit, I can do the following. So first, I am going to find the derivative separately for that numerator. So now the log of x squared at this point in your work of finding derivative, then this function should not be challenging at all. Outside we have a squaring function, inside we have a natural log of x. And so that means it leaves you 2 times a natural log of x and the power, the outside power reduced down to 1. And now chain rule says we multiply with 1 over x. That is the derivative of natural log of x all squared. Okay? And so this is f prime right here. That was tentatively f. This is f prime, all that here. Now, this is my g. Think about the, the L'Hopital's rule that was written in the, the little formula over there. Then taking the derivative of this simple function x gives me just 1. And so like I, have, like I said again, and now I have to emphasize again, this is not the quotient rule. This is the L'Hopital's rule where we actually find two separate kind of parallel. We're doing two separate and two parallel works of finding derivatives. We're finding one derivative for f on top, and we also find one derivative for g at the bottom, and just simply stack them up in the same uh, fraction order as how they started out in the beginning. So f, prime, f was on top, g was at the bottom. So now f prime on top, g prime at the bottom. Okay, and so now, so that limit here will be the same as this limit. So it's a completely new setup. That's the point. That's what the that's what the L'Hopital's rule say. We can completely come up with a brand new limit problem by simply generating the, the f prime over g prime. But make sure it, we take the same limit. Uh, the point like that, okay? And then the two limits problems here will turn out having the same result. And that's why it's, 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 it's useful like that. All right, so now let's continue further. So now, that starting problem was pretty much at that end for us, but this one here actually opens up a new door. So if we turn our focus to this route right here, then think about it. Over one, we don't have to write it out. And now all that here in the numerator, all of a sudden we realize we have a, we can rewrite it as a 2 natural log of x all over x. But th this 1 right here is completely gone, so I, it was really all over 1, but all over 1, we don't really have to write that. And so now I, I don't need to write that there. So that means uh, this limit now is reduced down to this next step, and it's still that limits for x approaching positive infinity. Okay, and so now for this curtain problem right here, then now I can see that, uh, so we are still, we are still at uh, infinity. If we apply right from this setup right here, if we are applying the, if we're applying the, the, the limits law immediately here, we're still ending up with infinity over infinity. And so that means uh, we can apply the L'Hopital's rule again. So in my next step, I am again going to apply my the L'Hopital's rule to my particular setup here. Think about this is f and this is g. I am going to find another derivative. So the derivative for natural log of x is a 1 over x. The derivative for x in the denominator is a 1. And it's all due to the fact that this curtain work is still being an indeterminate. Okay, so I'm, I am going to, and see, nobody ever says that we can only use the L'Hopital's rule once. So yes, if we can use it once, then we can use it twice. As, 
as long as you're still running, we do that work. We apply the low pitot rule the first time, and this work still unfortunately runs into an indeterminate. Then we take another derivative on top of each one of these, and and the low pitot rule will guarantee that each one of this will be sort of like f prime double prime over g double prime. Okay, and we take the limits as x goes to infinity, for example. So we can keep repeating the low pitot rule as many times as we need until we get to some, some actual answers. So, and so now, that's why I was applying the low pitot rule for this particular problem right here. So right here, writing, I'm writing down that the equals infinity over infinity just to emphasize that we, we once again ran into another, another indeterminate, indeterminate form where we need to apply the L'Hopital rule again. But then after we took the two separate derivatives, and it should have been a, a 2 here. It should have been a 2 there. Now I'm going to take the same limit, x going to positive infinity. Okay. But now what we have now, all of that together is a 2 over x. I'm taking the limit as x going to positive infinity. Now we have a direct answer. This overall limit here is a zero. Okay, that's overall limit here is a zero. And so now we find this answer here is the same according to the L'Hopital rule. It's the same answer as this indeterminate form in our middle step. Because our middle step here, we still ended up with uh, an indeterminate infinity over infinity, but the answer actually turns into a zero. So this answer here would actually be the same as the actual answer for this. And the answer for this now being zero is also the same as the answer for our beginning problem, which was uh, supposedly an infinity over infinity indeterminate. But now, after applying the L'Hopital rule twice, we came to the answer now as being a zero. And that is our final answer to that problem. So as a final conclusion, okay, limit of all that here equal to zero. All right, so that's how it done for it's done for the first problem right here, and we learn from we've learned from the experience of of this problem here is that we can we can uh, not only apply the L'Hopital rule once but as many times as we want. Okay. All right, and so in part B here, let's look at another problem right here for for any one of us to to have a better experience with that. So let's look at uh, how about limit of uh, sine of four x over tangent of five x. Okay, and now we want to find a limit as uh, x is approaching zero. Okay, so the problem when we are applying the applying the L'Hopital rule, it doesn't have to be just uh, x going to infinity or x going to the zero. It just it could be whatever limit point that we have for a problem, as long as our problem runs into one of the two famous uh, indeterminate forms so far. So let's find out if we go with limit laws. Then the numerator gives me see, limit quickly on scratch work limit uh, sine of four x over limit of tangent of 5x. And so quickly you can see that this gives me an in the numerator a limit 0 on the numerator. And the denominator here also gives me a limit 0. So this is right here the, the other forms of our two indeterminate forms like that. And so that means now it's a good sign that we have to bring in the L'Hopital rule again. So that means now that limit's there. L'Hopital rule says, L'Hopital rule, according to the L'Hopital rule that we can, uh, we can do this work. According to the L'Hopital rule, okay, then this limit, so basically we're, de we're departing from this problem, but we set up a new problem. That's the, the idea, and it, it also, I could have also mentioned that in, in, in problem A. We are, for now, temporarily departing this problem and set up a new problem, but the answer will be the same, and that was the whole, another way of seeing the L'Hopital rule over here. 
we set up a new problem by doing this. I'm going to take the derivative of sine of 4x, which now we can easily see that we're looking at 4 times the cosine of 4x. That's my derivative for sine of, sine of x. So it's a completely new function in the numerator. And I'm going to take the derivative of tangent of 5x, which gives me, at this point, it's easy for anyone to see that it's 5 times a tangent, I mean secant square, secant square of 5x. So we have a completely brand new setup, and each one of these came out from the two separate derivatives of this. That's, I, I could have also mentioned it like that way in my earlier discussion, in my earlier the problem right there. And then, but we're still going to take limit as x going to the, the same limit point. We still maintain the same, the same limit point right there. But so now, L'Hopital's rule guarantee that even though now it looks like two completely different problems, but the answer, the result, come out will be the same. So if we have some luck finding some answer to this result right here, I mean, if we have some luck finding some good result for this problem as set up here, then that result there will be equal to the result coming out of this, even though this was already known to be an indeterminate. Okay, so that's another way of seeing the, the L'Hopital's rule. So hopefully, after so many different ways, how I try to of how I try to explain about the L'Hopital's rule, let's really go ahead and con proceed further into solving this. So as x is getting close to zero, cosine of four x will become a cosine of zero, and which is eventually one. And so four times one, we ended up with. We will end up with, so now just the ordinary uh, basic limit laws right here. So numerator here give me just a 4 times a 1, because 4 is that constant coefficient. Cosine of a 0, because cosine, a trig function itself is a continuous function. I have made those arguments back in the days we were still learning about limits. And so being a continuous function, taking limits is the same as we can just go bring the limit operation inside of the expression here and just worry about the limit of x. Okay? So cosine of 0 is just 1. And so now in my denominator, 5 times secant squared, but secant squared of 5x. But now when we think about that, uh, when x is approaching to 0, then secant squared of 0 is also going to be 1. OK? And so, or maybe for, to be precise, a 1 squared is all just going to be 1. So our answer here turns out to be shockingly a finite limit right here, 4 over 5. Okay? So, and so now this is the answer to this limit, not the other one, not the beginning one. But now the L'Hopital's rule, and that's why I, ever since I learned this style from, from my professor, I, it kind of clicked with me and it, it really stayed with me since that day on, which is like some, some years away already. I mean, some years ago already. But see, I just want to really emphasize, and that why a professor of mine really, back then, really also pointed that out. It's two completely different setups right there. It's two separate limits problems, but L'Hopital's rule guarantee that the result on two problems here, on two problems here, are the same. So if we are successful finding the answer to one, the same answer will be the answer for the, the other one as well. Okay? So that means now, now I can go back and imply that. So sine of 4x over tangent of 5x, this will also give, as we're taking limits x approaching 0, this answer is also being 4 over 5 as well. That's how it works right there. Okay? And so that's how we got the problem in, in, uh, the problem in part B done right there. Okay, so after seeing the, the problems about twice. And in this particular example here, then we only had to apply the L'Hopital's rule once. But just like I said, there has no guarantee about how many times you, can, you are allowed to apply the L'Hopital's rule. Uh, you can apply the L'Hopital's rule not only once, but as many times as, as you want. Okay? And so now let me... introduce uh, part C of the same example here. So let's look at another limits problem. And, and I really aim throughout this entire video lecture, I really aim to give as many uh, problems as possible so that uh, for e e either the students who are studying with me or public viewers uh, will have a good clear sense of how the useful the, 
the, the, um, the low pitot rule can be. Okay, and so the next problem can be as following. So how about, uh, let's find limit of e to the 3x over x right here. Okay, and so, and let's look at the limit as x is approaching infinity again. Okay, and so now, again, basic limit laws says we can quickly do this. It's limit of e to the 3x over the, the same limit of x. And of course, these two are going to infinity. Okay, I hate to write it down and then eventually I have to erase it. Okay, but you know, for being the, res it's the, the responsibility of a te teacher, which I just have to be as, as detailed as I can right there. So now, this separate limit on, on its own grows to go to positive infinity. That's for the numerator. And then the denominator here goes to an infinity, a positive infinity as well. And so that means here we are, this limit, if we go straight with limit laws, the basic limit laws, we are ending up with another indeterminate form. And it's a good sign for applying a, for, uh, for turning out uh, attention to using the, the L'Hopital's rule again. Okay, so once we have successfully proven that our limit here is an indeterminate form. See, it's indeterminate form. It's an indi indeterminate, I'm a little short of space here. Let me write it all in a indeterminate. Okay. And so now I can also mention, and, and I, also, I should have also mentioned that in the, the previous the problems in, in part A and B as well. Do not skip this step because this step is an indicator of why you should turn your attention over to the, to using the L'Hopital rule, okay? Because otherwise, I mean, you don't have to write this little notes, but as long as you show your instructor, either that you know, if you're a student of mine, and as long as you show me or or for public viewers, if you can write down this step to show your instructor that if we simply go through the basic limit laws and immediately runs into one of the two indeterminate forms right here, then that's where you know, we can take the, a different route, okay? Even though, of course, on my board, I, 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 I was short at space, so I had to erase the work and, and, and write a completely brand new work. So I might have made viewers uh, think that, uh, or believe that it's, it, it's, uh, we, we don't need the step, but actually we do need that step. So have a, a line somewhere to indicate that your beginning limit problem runs into a, or ends up with a, an indeterminate, and then from there, we're gonna sort of like turn our direction into using the, the L'Hopital rule, okay? And so now, again, because I'm short of space here, and I just now pointed out that this function here, I mean, this limit, just by going with the limit laws, we'll run into, a, we run into an indeterminate form here. And so now, once we're clear with that, I am now going to use the L'Hopital rule according to L'Hopital. Okay, according to L'Hopital rule, th that famous uh, French mathematician then we can come up with the following setup. We're gonna take the derivative of e to the 3x, which gives me three times e to the 3x. So this is the derivative of my e to the 3x. I'm gonna take the derivative of my simple function x right here, which is one. And so now I'm looking at, at a completely brand new setup, but I'm still gonna consider the same limits to the same limit point uh, in, at infinity. So now, again, I, am, I already emphasized that in, in part A, I mean in part B, but here I'm gonna emphasize again. This is a completely brand new problem, but the setup came out because we took the derivative of, of F separately and the, the bottom here came out as we took the derivative, after we took the derivative of the denominator. So it's a completely different setup, but now the L'Hopital's rule on, that I wrote on the other board, this L'Hopital's rule here allowed us, or allows us to to take these two results as equality, or we, we will have guaranteed that the two results here will be equal. So we already gave up, we already gave up going that route of, of finding the, a direct, using the, the direct limit laws here, then who knows, going this route right here will, will get us some, some result, and then the two results will, I mean, whatever the result coming out here will be the same with that result over there. And so now I'm just gonna go ahead and follow basic limit laws on this one here. Notice that if we divide by one, it's just skipping the, the denominator. So limit as x going to 
infinity here is going to be e to the, I mean, 3e to the 3x. And now this function here is clearly, but now we at least we have a, a, a clear answer. It goes to positive infinity, okay, because just the e to the 3x function, or basically it's the e to the x function itself, the, the, the family of exponential function here. And so now this answer is the answer to our limit of this setup. But L'Hopital's rule says whatever the, the result that we can be clear now for this setup will be the same result for the other setup. So now that means uh, our final, it leads to our final conclusion that limit as x goes to positive infinity right, for e to the 3x over x, that limit is also going to be positive infinity. And that's our final answer for that. Okay, and so now we have done about three problems. So let me put in some uh, optional but real good understanding because it will equip you for the who knows any any viewers here after this class will advance on through calculus 2 and eventually arrive at calculus 3 where one day there you will learn about uh, sequences and series uh, this idea I'm about to introduce will be extremely useful there okay and so now let me So now, yes, among the among the two indeterminate forms here, zero over zero and infinity over infinity, I want to kind of focus on this one right now, because when your function f of x over g of x, when you're taking a limit, and especially especially when it's to infinity right here, then if your answer is uh, if your answer turns into, I mean, when you run into when you run into an indeterminate form right here, that means uh, that means as you are letting x come into infi infinity, that your both of your function in the numerator and in and the, in the denominator are both growing. The two functions are both growing, go growing, getting big. Okay, and so. So here, now I'm about to introduce that even though the two functions are both growing. So now let me recall about example uh, the one with part a over here. Natural log of x squared, that's one function. And then the, the one at the denominator was x. Okay, And we found a, I mean we were considering the problem when x was getting to positive infinity. Okay, And so you see as part of the basic limits, running into an indeterminate means uh, this limit, natural log of x all squared, but taking limits x to infinity and the other one x here, taking limit as uh, x is going to positive infinity as well. And, and yes, we already knew that something like this came to infinity over infinity. That just simply means, think about, think about the graphical meaning of this, or think of as an, a graphical interpretation of this. That means both of our functions are growing. The, the, the right end of our function, both of, both of these functions are growing big, growing big. But the idea now is that we want to understand about between the two growing, continuously growing functions here, who's growing at a faster rate, okay? Which one here is growing at a faster rate or or another way of saying some, some textbook authors use the term dominance. Which one of the two here, which one, which one among the two here is more dominant? And dominant here is in the sense of uh, growing faster in the end. Okay, and so now here's how I can see it. So the indeterminate, just to show the indeterminate specifically infinity over infinity is just to show that both of your functions are growing. Okay, they're both growing. But which one is growing to infinity faster? That's the idea. We want to find out. And so now, here's the here's what I have. Okay. And so, so now I'm going to need to erase that work a little bit. And I'm going to put example one a back. We're not going to go over example one a again because we already solved the problem. But let's give a it a different look right here. But uh, so natural log of x all square over x 
We took that limit. It was an indeterminate infinity of infinity. And so I just now made my argument that, so now that means the two functions are both growing big. But now our actual work after using L'Hopital's rule, so L'Hopital's rule is just a technique to help us find an actual answer. So with this actual answer here, it turned out, it turned out that using L'Hopital's rule, using L'Hopital's rule, it turned out that if we recall from the earlier example, you can go ahead and roll back to the video that we've done back in example one, part A right there, but the answer for this, according to the L'Hopital's rule, was uh, zero. So that means in the end, using L'Hopital's rule, then that we ended up with natural log of x r square over x and take the, the limit as x going to infinity. This limit really is a zero. So that means, now let me tell you, if this final limit here is a finite limit and particularly zero, and we knew that this limit actually came out from initially, from the beginning, being an indeterminate, and we use L'Hopital's rule to come up with this answer, so once this final answer here is being a zero, that means uh, our denominator one is growing faster. Okay, our denominator function here, they're both growing. The two functions are growing. I made it that clear from here. An infinity over infinity is indicating that both functions are growing. But now since observing our final limits here, we successfully arrived at x. I mean, at that limit being zero over here. So that means our function x here is growing faster. Okay, it's, it's, getting, it's getting higher at a faster rate right here. Because think about it. I mean, it, it's uh, starting to get a little bit uh, hard to understand, but they're both growing, but they, they come together as a quotient setup right here. So if the bottom function is, if the denominator function is growing faster, then eventually it becomes dominant. And dominance means the overall quotient just keep getting smaller and smaller. So they're both growing, but the bottom one growing faster, so at consequently the, the overall quotient becomes smaller value and smaller value ever in every step. And eventually that's what this final limit being zero mean. Okay? So let me bring up the graph right here and and, and yet, uh, you will understand what I mean as well. So give me a minute or so to prepare my graph. All right, so let me switch over to, to the graphing screen right here. So there's our graphing empty, our graphing space right here. This is the function for this is the function, the graph for natural log of x r square right here. This is the function for it, it's natural log of x r square. Okay. So, see, as x is approaching positive infinity, the, our function is growing. It keeps growing. It keeps growing. It keeps growing. Okay? But now, let me put together with, uh, with our famous function. How about the one in the denominator was g of x equals x. Okay, so the version in blue right here is that nice 45-degree four, line right here. You see, so as we are letting x coming to positive infinity, both of our lines here, the, the one in blue, the one in blue for f of x, g of x equals x, and the one in red here is for f of x in the numerator being being uh, being the natural log of x all square right here. Then look at the graph itself as we are navigating to the right hand side and keep getting further out to the right end. The blue line, uh, see, become, uh, and this is what I mean by growing faster. You see the difference between at each further x value to the right hand side and the, the space between the, the line in blue and the line in, and, and the curve in red are being widened out and widened out. Okay? Because uh, this line is growing faster, even though they're both growing, but this line in blue over right here, in blue, is growing faster, so that space between them become widened and widened. But that means, uh, Mathematically speaking, so back on my, my board here, that means, means mathematically speaking, if we set our two functions in a quotient and the one, that's, the one in the numerator that's growing slower and the one in the denominator is growing faster than the overall fraction, we'll keep getting smaller value, smaller value, and smaller value, and e at the end becomes a zero. Okay? And of course, observe that both of these are all positive functions, okay? They're both positive functions. 
All right, so that's one way of how I can see it. And so now looking at the derivative, I mean at the, the final limits like that can help you decide in case both of your functions are growing to positive infinity. But you can tell that one of them is, is growing faster than the other one. So on the other hand, think about uh, think about our part C that we just got out of. Example one, part C right here. So it was e to the three x over x. Okay, and that was uh, yes. And now we also took the limit as x go to positive infinity. So the two functions it itself, the, the two functions themselves are all positive function. And so yes, it was initially an indeterminate form. And so now it means it, it further means that the two functions are both growing, getting bigger and getting bigger. But now our final limits, we use a L'Hopital's rule as a technique to really tear down, tore it down, and, and, and got our final answer. So this limit here at the end, because right here is an indeterminate. It's sort of like a race between the two functions. Okay, So that race here, it could be the someone is winner and, and the other one is being the, so, so three e to the 3x over x right here. And x is getting to positive infinity. So our actual final answer as a clear final def I mean as a clear final answer, as a final judgment, we came to positive infinity. One positive infinity. And so now that means what? Now the way how I see it, e to the three x is a dominant, okay? It's dominant over x in the denominator. So why is that? Because yes, they're both growing. They're both getting bigger, but it has to be, it must be that the, the one in the numerator is growing faster, faster than the one grow in the, de, you know, faster than how it grows uh, in the denominator, because that's the only way where, you see, again, our function here is being set up as a as a quotient right here. So if the one in the numerator is growing faster than the one in the denominator is go, going to be, than the one in the denominator, I mean, if the numerator is growing faster than, than the, the one in the denominator, then the overall quotient will eventually, will keep getting bigger, bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? And so, and so that's why, you know, the, when you observe that the final limits of a quotient like this is in, in infinity, that means, of, and, and we know that each one of these itself individually went to the infinity, then we now know that the numerator has to be the, the dominant one. Right there. Okay? So that kind of gives you a, a, a way to test. I mean, this type of problem doesn't have to come now in our course here, but it could be in, in, in a far future when you advance to some further class, and, and, and this, no, this skill could be a little, could be, uh, useful. But let's say, you see, now I'm looking at x squared plus 4x plus 1, okay? And now I'm looking at x uh, cubed minus 5x plus 1, okay? These two functions. If we're looking at the limit as x going to a positive infinity, this for sure is positive infinity, simply because it's a polynomial, even degree, okay? positive leading coefficient. So right end behavior for sure is going to rise to something like that as we have already learned. And then this function x going to positive infinity. Okay. It also, I know this limit here also grows to positive infinity on its own right here because again it's a polynomial. The limits as x goes to positive infinity means it's the right end behavior of this function. So when x, but this, this is uh, an odd power, it's an odd power with a positive leading coefficient. So the right end also rises, okay? So that's why both of these are growing big and growing big. But now we want to decide, uh, as a practical problem, we want to decide among these two right here, which one grows faster? Which one grows faster? Then, then to test that, to test that, you got uh, two different ways of, of doing it. You got two different ways of doing it. You can either test that as a, if you're setting that up as an, an x squared 
plus 4x plus 1 and put that over the other one. It's just, it's just a, a, a general testing and it will give this, the similar result right here. So if we're setting it up as the x squared plus 4x on top and the, the, the cubic one at the bottom, then we have already learned, we have already learned in our fundamental techniques prior to this video. And we can also apply the L'Hopital's rule here again as well. But, uh, I, but you know, in, in my own philosophy, any time we, we can, uh, I mean, any time that we can use uh, our, our fundamental technique, then we can just use it. We don't have to use too, too fancy technique, just for something like this, okay? And so, this gives me a, an overall limit being one. And you can review earlier video lectures of how I came up with one for this, okay? But now, see, just one quick test right here. Now it tells me that even though both of my functions are growing, but the one here is growing faster or it's the or it's the, the dominant one okay S same problem trying to decide the two functions here who's the more dominant one someone can also set up as the following way right here some other one can set it up as x cubed minus 5x plus 1 see some people can set that on top and the the, the other one at the bottom it's just a limits problem and so doing your work and once again you can roll back to my earlier video lectures uh, to find out a way how we handle a problem like this but I am sure that this will go to a positive infinity so that should not uh, so this answer here it's different answer with what we've had in the other way around but the final conclusion about the dominance function between these two will not change it's still now indicating that this one here in the numerator now is the dominant one okay and so that's uh, one way of how we can decide dominant function and, 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 the, and or dominance means uh, whoever grows uh, faster than the other one among the two of them. Okay, all right. And now I want my students who study with me and, my, and also for the public viewers who, who want to learn from this lesson right here to be extremely careful about uh, using the L'Hopital's rule. I mean, it, it was clear in the, in, the, in, the, in the statement of the L'Hopital's rule, but surprisingly as my time is teaching, the, the, as, as in, in, in my experience teaching, I've seen enough people making the, the following mistakes. So I want to point it out right here. So let me bring that into a one little example that I call it example two, and you will understand uh, the mistake I'm trying to point out, and hopefully viewers will stay away from it. Okay? So let's evaluate. So let's just evaluate another limits problem out there. So what I have here on my uh, list of problems here is how about natural log of x over x right here. Okay? And uh, we're taking the limit that x goes to zero. Okay? And so, maybe because students that I have seen in the past who made the, 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 the mistake that I'm about to introduce here was, was so happy that, that they found this method. They, they felt so glad that they found this method to the point that they, they got uh, too excited to use it. Okay, so they just look for simply just maybe the, the mentally they just look for any chance that they could to use a low pitot rule and they, they thought it's going to save the way. But... So here's the kind of mistake that I see. My student in the past quarter that I have seen have done this. In my past time teaching have done this. They just simply get directly into using the L'Hopital rule. And so that limits here, I mean that function here as we take the, the derivative gives us a one over x. The one in the denominator, as we take the derivative, it gives us one. Because that's what the L'Hopital rule says. And then the, we take the same limits there again. And so now as x approaching, and this here, there's now no need to write the 1 in the denominator. So really, it, it turns into a, a 1 over x. And we're taking the limit as x approaching 0 from the right-hand side. And, and of course, I should have also mentioned, see, even though from the right-hand side or from the left-hand side, it's still a limit point. So L'Hopital's rule can still be applied. But let's find out further where the error is in this problem. So now the answer here is, Supposedly, I mean, is according to this work, according to this work, the answer would be infinity, positive infinity. 
But now the major error is that the major big error I'm about to point out here is that the L'Hopital's rule being applied here is a little too rush, okay, a little too rush, in a sense that recall that L'Hopital's rule is only applied is only applied when we run into an indeterminate form, either a zero over zero or an infinity over infinity. So look at this function itself. The person who rushed immediately into writing the L'Hopital rule here is 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 making an error in the sense that the step to check for indeterminates here was not taken. Okay, so if we carefully check for indeterminates form, then this function here, this limit here, was not one of the two indeterminates form where, where L'Hopital's rule can apply. You see, basic limit law right here. That's x going to, to 0 from this from the right hand side for each of these. The numerator goes to negative infinity, but the denominator here goes to zero. So it's not really an indeterminate form right there. Okay, it's not really an indeterminate form. And so in that way, we just don't go that, we, we just can't use the L'Hopital rule. So if we worked out with the answer, if we worked out with the answer, the actual way to perform with this limit here so this is the this going this way using L'Hopital's rule is an error simply because we it, this function is actually this limits from is not the, the one of the two indeterminate form. So we can just simply do the problem as following. I can just rewrite this expression here as a one over x times a natural log of x. Okay, and so. So now we are taking the, the limit as x goes to 0 right here from the right hand side. Okay, but now pro the, the, li taking limits of a product allowed us to take cut it down into two separate li limits. So one of them here, one limit for 1 over x and the same limit here for natural log of x. Okay, and now we are going to find out. So limit of 1 over x here as x approaching 0 from the right hand side will actually be a positive infinity. But whereas the other one here is actually dangerously a negative infinity. Okay, so, so now it, the overall answer here turns out to be negative infinity. Right there. Okay. And so, and that's why, you know, we, we ran into an error because it, it led our answer into something off. I mean, it's, what it, I mean, it's, it's still infinity, but it's completely two different directions, okay? This is positive infinity if we mistakenly Im apply immediately the L'Hopital rule, and here it's actually negative uh, infinity, the actual answer for that, okay? And so, and then we can verify that uh, through the graph right here. So let me quickly prepare my graph on the computer screen and I can quickly show everyone that. All right, so now let's look at our graphing screen on the computer screen here. So on our graphing calculator on the computer screen, this is the graph for natural log of x over x. Here. This is the graph, even though I don't have to require anybody to really uh, graph the, ev any of these problems every single time. Because being able to do that completely without looking at the graph is the, my main aim right there. But see, as we're getting closer to, to zero from the right-hand side, and look at our graph behavior, it keeps dropping down to negative infinity into negative infinity, into negative infinity. All right, and so, so that tells us clearly that if we apply, if we rush into using the L'Hopital rule, then we ended up with a positive infinity, which is an, an incorrect answer. Right there. So be careful from that mistake. The L'Hopital rule can only apply when it's when you run into either a zero over zero indeterminate form or infinity over infinity indeterminate form like that. It could be negative infinity over positive infinity. It could be positive infinity over negative infinity as well. But it gotta be one of those two forms: zero over zero or infinity with infinity. Okay.